I mean, the worst thing I ever saw. That's actually kind of easy. After I finished up with SCP-245, I didn't actually have a job at the Foundation, so they bounced me around a bit while they tried to figure out what to do with me. And for like a year in 07, I was working in Human Resources at Site 88. Uh, we worked at an adjunct site in Bay Manette, alongside the daycare department. <laughs> Uh, there were HR guys on site as well, but we handled the bulk of the paperwork and processing there off site. Um, HR has to deal with a lot of family stuff sometimes. So, you know, mixing that together with the child care. And also, by the way, child care is a great benefit for employees. I'm glad they figured that out early. <laughs> so the whole thing kind of just worked out. Uh, there was this one woman. I always remember her because she had this haughty stance every time she came in. She'd puff out her chest and then demand this or that, or just, you know, drop her kids off. Usually both. <laughs> she had two kids, though. An adorable six-year-old girl and uh, a nine-year-old boy. Let me, put the, let me be clear. She was never rude. But she was definitely a little demanding and definitely proud. Uh, her husband was an MTF agent at Site 88. Uh, he was 53, which put him two years off of optional retirement, and then seven years off of mandatory reassignment. And I'd only met him a few times, mostly at company functions. It was like he was leaking sunshine out of his ears every time you talked to him. He was loud and boisterous and never a bully. Uh, he'd been with the Foundation for like 30 years at that point, and he'd kept his good nature the entire time, which... I personally do not understand, but no one ever had anything bad to say about this guy until he got reassigned to 110 Montauk. And it wasn't some sort of a punishment. It's never a punishment. When my boss used to say, it's just a matter of accounting. My boss always used to call it that whenever a critical project was short on people. It's just a matter of accounting. Like, that made it better. <laughs> I remember the moment the guy got told. I saw it through the window. He didn't argue, but I, I get the inclination he understood what it meant because he did. He shrank a little, you know, but I was used to seeing that HR has that effect on people. And he came back a month later after like a full course of amnestics. But it was like he'd left something behind. I talked to him at the next company event, which I think was a July 4th barbecue. He was with his MTF buddies, and they were laughing about an old mission. But that old spark, the good nature, it feels like it was just gone. I mean, if that was all, I think he would have been okay. But then a month later, they took a bullet to the knee in a firefight with the insurgency, and they stuck him on desk duty during his recovery. They prescribed, I think it was Percocet for the pain. Nobody thought too much of that, you know? The guy was a drinker, obviously, but nothing serious. Besides, he had a family. I mean, even if it was unlikely that he was going to get back into the field, this man was going to work as hard as he could to get there. And, and that's where I realized we went wrong. Because the problem with treating addiction risk like a moral failing is that you can't see how a good man could end up strung out on pills. I mean, we got better mostly because of stuff like this, but this was back in the mid-2000s. We as an organization, we as a civilization <laughs> weren't there yet. And he fails a drug test two months later. Oxy and Vicodin? I, again, I don't remember exactly, but he ended up on supervised leave for a few months, and that was literally all we did. No drug treatment, no counseling. We just told him to take a couple of months off and get his shit together. And we also cut him off from his legitimate... <laughs> legitimate painkillers and then he came back just before christmas completely clean and my boss figured that was the end of it guy was a good soldier close to retirement we just keep him chained to a desk now until he hit 55 and then we'd make that voluntary retirement a little bit more forced and then a week later he failed another drug test this time he had heroin on him so we put him on leave again this time without pay and my boss started talking about how we couldn't keep this guy on the payroll anymore. And then I remember, because it shocked me, uh, when he used the word degenerate to describe this guy <laughs> more than once. And then the guy went home that day 
and put a gun in his mouth. My boss said, the problem had solved itself. And then the guy's wife came in with her kids. I didn't hear about what happened until afterwards, but we had some bad policies. He had violated the terms of his employment, so his pension was gone and his life insurance was voided because it was a suicide. Actually, let me just say, I disagree with that policy. I understand where it comes from. Suicide is serious and for lack of a better word, contagious. Uh, Site 42 just lost like half a dozen people last year before they got that situation under control. So back in 07, part of our policy was that if you killed yourself, and this is a serious risk at the foundation, your family gets nothing. It's supposed to be a deterrent. So there this woman was standing up tall and puffed up and then and she just broke. I mean, it was like she'd been replaced by a smaller version of herself. She just, she'd lost her husband. And I'm sure that hadn't processed yet, much less the rest of the paperwork. So we got her kids out of the room. And I, I stayed with the, I stayed with the wife for the rest of the day while she tried to get herself together. And then... Yeah, I put in for a transfer the next day. Working on a little something else, I uh, thought I'd put up the work that I came out of this with. I've done this, I've actually only really settled with this program about three times. This is the third time I've fiddled with it. And the second time I produced something that was actually um, publishable. Yeah, that's the right word to use here. Anyway, uh, so this is actually one I did without, uh, without using face tracking technology, or I should say, more accurately, not using the lip sync technology parts. <laughs> Programming software, I don't know what the best way to put it is, but you can do these with manual control too. So I took manual control over uh, the eyes and then auto tracked, instead of using the facial camera tracking, I used uh, uh, software to actually lip sync, or I should say sync the lip movements to the audio track that I created beforehand. Uh, I still did record a version of it uh, so that I could get the head movements right, but I am getting a little bit more uh, comfortable with being able... At some point, I'm going to be able to do this with absolutely no camera at all, but we're not quite there yet. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dcimmerian and pledge at any level, like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100. And a new patron at $20, Kendrel. I thought I'd give them a shout out. Thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Thursday.